Shu Huang. One of the most formidable military commanders in the Three Kingdoms era, he served under three generations of Wei and became known as one of its five elite generals. He toiled solely for the benefit of the state. His devotion to discipline in himself and his troops displays his skills and leadership, which enabled him to achieve many victories. Xu Huang was always cautious when it came to battle. He would send scouts out far and wide to assess the enemy. Only when he felt victory was certain would he engage in battle. Then he would pursue the enemy fiercely, running them down. His most notable credit was arguably when he broke through the siege at Fan Castle and defeated Guan Yu in open battle, forcing him to retreat. Chen Shu appraised Xu Huang briefly. Xu Huang led a simple and humble life and he was very self-disciplined. When he went into battle and realised that he couldn't win, he would still encourage his men to fight on in pursuit of glory and he did not rest or have meals until they had won. He often said, The people of past complained that they did not have a chance to serve a wise lord. Now I am privileged to have encountered one, so I'll do my best to serve him instead of seeking to increase my personal fame. He also did not maintain a wide social network throughout his life. The saying, five elite generals, were Chen Shu's top generals of Wei. This saying is not to be confused with the five tiger generals, a term used to reference the top generals of Shu in Liu Guanzhong's Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Chen Shu wrote that of all the great generals of this period, these five generals could be considered the best of them all. He then attributed each general accordingly. Yu Jin was renowned for his courage in battle. Yu Jin, Zhang He and Xu Huang were famous for their leadership skills and ability to achieve victory. Zhang Liao was known to be the best of the five. He matched his peers, but his reputation was elevated after his victory against Sun Quan at Heifei. He hailed from the same clan as Xu Xu and Xu Sheng, but a different surname housed the likes of Xu Chu and Xu Gong. Xu Huang was born in Heidong Commandery, where in his youth he served as a minor official in its commandery's office. He became a subordinate of the former white wave bandit Yang Feng, who had been instated as a general under the Han government. Xu Huang followed him to attack rebels and then became commissioned as a cavalry commandant for his efforts. In 195, when Li Zhue and Guo Xi turned on each other and started warring in the streets of Chang'an, Yang Feng and Xu Huang were serving under Li Zhue. Yang Feng and Song Guo attempted to assassinate Li Zhue but failed, so were forced to leave the city. After Zhang Ji persuaded Li Zhue and Guo Xi to make peace, they soon allowed the emperor to return to the old capital Luoyang. Xu Huang was then able to convince Yang Feng to lend his assistance in escorting the Emperor. Yang was appointed as General who revives righteousness before he joined up with Guo Xi who then led the forces which travelled east. On the way, Guo Xi changed his mind and decided on a new destination for the convoy. The Emperor fled to Yang Feng's camp for protection and they successfully defeated Guo Xi when he arrived to reclaim him. It wasn't long until Li Zhue and Guo Xi combined their forces to pursue the Emperor. They defeated Yang Feng but he bought the emperor enough time to keep moving. Yang Feng then summoned the White Wave bandits and some Xiongnu forces, who responded to the call to help the emperor. Li Zhue quickly returned with more troops and defeated Yang Feng again before killing several officials, but the emperor managed to escape across the Yellow River. When they safely reached their destination, Xu Hong was rewarded as a village Marquis. Among those that escorted the emperor were Han Ziyan and Dong Cheng. They remained at Luoyang to guard the emperor, while Yang Feng and Xu Huang garrisoned at Liang State. Han Ziyan and Dong Cheng fought daily, and it was only due to the Emperor's actions that their forces had not attacked each other yet. Xu Huang convinced Yang Feng to summon Tao Tao, asking for his assistance in dealing with the crisis. Initially, Yang Feng wanted to go along with Xu Huang's plan and join Tao, but he ultimately refused and went his own way. Xu Huang followed him. The next year, Yang Feng was defeated in battle by Tao at Liang State, where after Xu Huang pledged allegiance to Wei. Xu Huang's first task was to eliminate bandits in two counties. He was given troops to command and successfully completed his mission before being promoted to a major general. When Lu Bu tried to seize Xu province in Tao's absence in 198, Xu Huang attacked and defeated two of Lu Bu's generals, Xiao Xu and Li Zhu, then received their surrender. He then fought under Xi Huan in Hainei commandery against Sui Gu and ended up beheading him either during or after the battle. Near the end of 199, Liu Bei betrayed Tao Tao after using the pretext of eliminating Yuan Shu on his behalf. Tao feared an attack from Yuan Shao as well, and so wanted to quickly eliminate Liu Bei. The next year, Xu Huang helped defeat Liu Bei's forces at Xiaopi, which led to Guan Yu's capture and the beginning of open war between Tao and Yuan when Liu Bei fled to the latter. 
Xu Huang participated in the skirmishes at Beoma and Yan Ford. When Yan Liang was sent to attack Liu Yan's garrison at Beoma, Tao heeded Xun Yu's suggestion that a feint attack may be used to split Yuan's forces. Guan Yu and Zhang Liao led the vanguard to reinforce Beoma, whilst Xu Huang's forces advanced over the Yan crossing, which lured off part of the enemy main force. At the second skirmish at Yan Ford, Xu Huang was part of the small but elite cavalry force that scored a brilliant victory over the disorganised enemy troops led by Wen Chao and Liu Bei. Rebels appeared led by Zhu Bi southwest of Xu Chang, so Xu Huang and Tao Hong led forces to quickly eliminate them, whereafter he was promoted to Lieutenant General. Yuan Shao's spearhead may have been blunted, but his main forces were still overwhelming. Xun Yu pointed out that Yuan Shao had thousands of grain carts being transported, which were being guarded by Han Meng. Xu Huang led small cavalry units of Xi Huan to intercept a position and clashed with them at Gu Xi. They defeated Han Meng and burned his baggage train, which forced Yuan Shao to call in relief supplies in response. In the 10th month, Chen Yu Xiong arrived at Hebei with 10,000 troops and large reserves of supplies. Yuan Shao sent him to Wu Chao, which was near to Gu Xi. Shortly after this, Xu Yu's intel on the supplies location at Wu Chao was trusted by Tao Tao, who then led a cavalry force to burn the place down. By 203, Yuan Shao had been defeated, but his son still posed a problem. When Tao Tao attacked Yi City in Yuan Shang's absence, he saw it would be difficult to capture. He left a portion of his army to lay siege to the city, and then also led forces to capture the other cities and towns in the surrounding area. Xu Huang was dispatched to Yi Yang County to receive the surrender of its prefect Han Fan, who was secretly preparing defences instead. Xu Huang wrote a letter explaining why they should surrender. He attached it to an arrow and then fired it over the city walls. Thereupon, Han Fan agreed to give up. Xu Huang went to visit Tao to restrain him from massacring the population of Yi Yang after Han Fu surrenders. The Yuan have not yet been defeated, and all their cities that are thinking of surrender will listen carefully for news of how you handle this affair. Today, if you massacre Yi Yang, tomorrow, all cities will defend until the last man, and I fear the area north of the Yellow River will not be settled any time soon. You should reward those two counties generously, in order to encourage the others. Tao agreed to the rationale of this tactical consideration, then bestowed noble ranks and titles onto the defenders of Han Dang, Yi Yang, and any others who surrendered. Xu Huang's next target was to attack a city which guarded a supply route for the Yuans. He concealed ambush soldiers and captured three enemy camps. After this, Xu Huang led soldiers alongside Tao's main force against Yuan Tan and attacked the remainder of his forces around Ping Yuan, putting down a rebellion there. He then arduously marched to Liaozi Commandery and helped Tao score a victory against Tadun and the Yuan brothers at the Battle of White Wolf Mountain in 207. For his efforts, Xu was promoted to the general who traverses the open country. Xu Huang followed Tao south when he went to pacify Jing province. He fought at the Battle of Red Cliffs and retreated north after the Wei defeat. The Allies began their next phase of their strategy by taking control of Nan Commandery. Xu Huang was ordered to remain behind with Tao Ren at Jianglin County, so Xu Huang was sent to protect Fan Cheng. There was vigorous fighting around the area, but Xu Huang was able to defeat opposing forces in three nearby counties before the Battle of Jiangling began. Tao Ren suffered massive losses when he led his elite cavalry to retake Yi Ling, which had been captured by Gan Ning. The area was an important gateway into Yi, and its loss meant reinforcements from Liu Zhang were blocked from helping Tao Wei. Zhou Yu followed Liu Meng's plan to leave Ling Tong to guard the Wu main camp, whilst the main force assisted Gan Ning. Tao Ren did not expect the full force of the Wu army to be at Yi Ling, and so suffered heavy losses. He also only sent a light force led by Xu Huang against Ling Tong, who had made it appear that there was still a sizable army at the Wu main camp. Xu Huang tried to capture it for over 10 days, but was defeated by Ling Tong and failed. Xu Yu was worried about Tao Tao's unscathed units that numbered over 100,000, which were scattered around strategic locations in the county. Xu Yu and Liu Bei agreed to send Guan Yu around, bypassing the strong point of Tao Ren's position to isolate him. Guan set up blockades along all the main passages into the area, then prepared for a coordinated attack with Xiao Yu and Liu Bei, who were on the front line, by sailing his forces up the Han River. At this time, Xu Huang and Man Chong were at Danyang, and led an attack against Guan Yu's forces on the river, but it's unlikely that they actually fought, as it's not mentioned in Guan Yu's or Man Chong's biography. Li Tong engaged one of the blockades. He dismounted and personally removed them one by one, fighting valiantly, but he later died from illness during the campaign. Only Xu Huang is recorded as breaking through the blockade to support Tao Ren, 
but none of the Wei forces were able to fully assist him. Guan Yu was eventually routed by Yu Jin and Wen Pin at Xiaoku, which led to the battle becoming prolonged. The besieged Tao Ren defended his position with the utmost bravery. He gave his troops a much needed morale boost when all sight of victory had been lost when he conducted the successful rescue missions of Niu Jin and his 100 trapped men. When Zhou Yu attacked one of Tao Ren's camps, he was seriously wounded by the Wei Defense Force when they hit him in the right rib with an arrow. This led to a year of intense fighting and ultimately, Tao Ren was forced to retreat from Nan Commandery. In 210, Xu Hong was assigned under Xie Hao Yuan's command and they led troops to suppress a rebel uprising in Tai Yuan Commandery. They lifted the siege on their city after they captured 20 enemy camps. Xiang Yao was beheaded in this process and his forces were massacred. When the lords west of the Tong Pass rebelled in the following year, Xu Huang was sent near his birthplace in Heidong Commandery to keep the people settled. He was gifted cattle and alcohol by Tao Tao, who allowed him to repair and clean up his ancestors' tombs. Xu Huang presented meat and wine to the people and allowed them to pray to their ancestors, thus they remained calm. When Tao arrived, he wanted to bypass Tongye by heading north to Heidong, then west to Puban, then south. Xu Huang said, Duke Tao, they hold your soldiers here and leave Puban unoccupied, so you know they cannot make plans. Now if you lend me elite soldiers, I'll lead a vanguard force over Puban crossing and prevent the rebels from capturing it. Tao agreed, so Xu Huang and Zhu Ling led 4,000 troops to establish a beachhead at Puban. Liang Xing led over 5,000 soldiers in a night raid against them, but Xu Huang found victory. Thanks to his beachhead, Tao was later able to safely cross and defeat the rebels. Xu Huang and Zhu Ling then returned under Xie Hao Yuan's command to assist him in pacifying Yumi and Xi'an tribesmen. Once this was settled, they regrouped with Tao's main force at Anding and helped him receive Yang Xiu's surrender. Tao then returned to Yi, so Xie Hao Yuan sent Xu Huang to hunt down the remaining Liang rebels who were still at large in the area. Liang Xing was tracked down and beheaded, which led to the surrender of his 3,000 households. Xu Huang continued to pacify local tribes throughout Tao's return to the area and his successful invasion of Hanzhong. He was promoted after his successes in the mountains against the Di peoples. Shortly after this, he also lifted a siege against Shang Shun, rescuing him by defeating Chen Fu and destroying some 30 rebel camps. After Tao Tao captured Hanzhong, he once again returned to Yi and left Xie Hao Yuan and Xu Huang behind to coordinate the defences of the city. During this time, Chen Shi was sent to cut off Hanzhong's main communication line by pressuring the southwestern border of Yangping, just west of Hanzhong. Xu Huang led a detachment and launched a fierce attack on Chen Shi, ultimately defeating him. The losses on the Xu side and the disorganized retreat were so bad that the troops resorted to jumping off the cliff as the treacherous road meant they could not fall back properly. When Tao heard of this victory, he led reinforcements to Hanzhong to counter Liu Bei and presented Xu Huang with a staff of authority and said to him, This pass is a crucial gateway into Hanzhong. Liu Bei intends to isolate the pass and move on to conquer it. General Xu, in one fell swoop you've dashed the rebels' plans. Well done. By the time Tao arrived at Yangping, Huang Zhong had already killed Xie Hao Yuan and Han Zhong was essentially lost. Tao had to withdraw from the west. Xu Huang was soon sent to Wan Castle to assemble reinforcements for Tao Ren, who was now under attack from Guan Yu. Tao Ren defended Fan Cheng and Lu Chang defended Xiang Yang from the incoming sieges for months. Yu Jin was first sent with a relief force, but his army was obliterated by a flood and he was captured. Xu Huang was sent next with the second relief force, and he was now essentially leading the vanguard for the reinforcement army. He was ordered by Tao to not advance until all the other reinforcements had arrived, but Xu Huang headed south anyway with the troops at his disposal. He knew that most of his soldiers composed of new recruits who had little training. He didn't march straight into battle, but camped behind the enemy position. His formation posed as a problem and agitated the Xu troops. Tao Tao had sent Xu Shang and Lu Jian to reinforce Xu Huang and they soon arrived. Xu Huang then marched forward with his allies. When Xu Huang showed up to Guan Yu's base at Yan City, he had his men pretend to dig trenches, making it look like they were blocking off his supply line. Guan Yu's forces fell for this trick and burned down their camp then left the city, which allowed Xu Huang to secure a foothold. He secured Yan City and began to build a succession of a dozen camps towards Guan Yu's encirclements. One of his camps was apparently 30 feet away from the enemy forces' siege works. Xu Huang waited for more reinforcements. Wei officers arrived with military units to support him, including Yin Xu and Zhu Gai. Xu Huang and Guan Yu had long been close friends. Separated by vast distances and opposing sides, they wrote letters to one another. They remained loyal to their respective lords by never discussing military affairs and only speaking of day-to-day -day life. 
Xu Huang arrived, then dismounted from his steed, and then shouted, Whoever obtains Guan Yu's head has a bounty of a thousand taels of gold. A shocked Guan Yu asked, Brother, what are you saying? Xu Huang simply said, This is a matter of the state. Guan Yu's encirclement was made up of five camps, one main camp leading the siege, and four supporting camps atop four hills. Xu Huang spread rumours that he planned to attack the middle camp, and waited for the enemy forces to move in to defend that area. He secretly sent his units to take out the four supporting camps instead, which caused many of Guan Yu's men to panic and flee when he learned what was happening. Guan Yu personally led 5,000 men to reinforce his support camps, but Xu Huang defeated him and pursued him right into Guan Yu's main camp. Many Xu soldiers drowned in the Han River as they quickly boarded their boats to flee. Others cast themselves in anyway in a desperate effort to cross. Fan and Xiang Yang were on the north and south banks of the river respectively. The sieges were lifted, but Xu forces still controlled the southern shore. Tao had great things to say about Xu Huang's actions. The rebels protected themselves with moats and rings ten foot deep, yet he led all of his forces deep into the enemy encirclement and secured victory, beheading many of their officers. For thirty plus years I've been commanding soldiers, and not in that time, nor in the time of our ancestors have I ever heard of a general who would lead his forces into such an encirclement. Xu Huang brought his forces back to reunite with the Wei main force. Tao came seven miles out of Xu Chang to the Ma Slope to greet him in person. Throughout the ranks of the fielded troops, many soldiers shifted about to get a better view of Tao Tao, but Xu Huang's men stood stationary in neat files. His forces were so highly disciplined, and Huang would often drive them hard. Sometimes the soldiers were so busy they didn't even have time to eat. Seeing this, Tao remarked, General Xu has truly inherited the style of Xu Yafu. He then ordered a great feast in recognition of Xu Huang's achievements, where Tao raised a toast to him saying, it was your good work that saved Fan and Xiang Yang. When Tao Pi took the throne, Xu Huang was promoted, then in feast as a district marquis of Lucian. He was heavily trusted by Tao Pi, who soon became emperor, where Huang was also further in fief as the county marquis of Yang. Pi ordered Xu Huang and Xi Hao Shang to lead an army to attack Xiang Yong commandery, to assist the Shu Han defector Meng Da. Many of the Shu generals simply surrendered or fled on their arrival, so the Wei forces easily pacified three commanderies and nine counties. Shu Huang was then sent to guard Yang Ping, so had his district Marquis title changed to match his new location. During Tao Pi's three-pronged attack against Wu that started in 222, Shu Huang was part of the forces sent to besiege Nan commandery in 223. When Tao Pi died in 226, Sun Quan personally led troops to attack Xiang Xia commandery, which was being defended by Wen Ping. At the same time, he had Zhu Geijin and Zhang Ba lead a separate force to attack Xiang Yang. The Wei forces were commanded by Sima Yi and Xu Huang helped repel the invasion. More than a thousand Wu soldiers and Zhang Ba were killed in action. Xu Huang was rewarded with another 200 taxable households, bringing his total number to 3,100. He soon became seriously ill, and historically was not killed by Meng Da, but died of illness. He left instructions to be given a simple burial after his death, and he was posthumously titled Robust Ma Kui. Xu Gai inherited his father's peerage and left it to his son, Xu Ba. Yang Ping was divided later by Tao Rui, when he awarded titles to two of Xu Huang's descendants. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.